I've fallen in love with the idea of limitless pride. And the opposite of that is basically, or limitless shamelessness. Whoa, well, okay. And I know it's a mindfuck. Explain on that. So based on all the mental health work I had to do on myself, I'm like trying to figure out why do I feel the way I feel about myself for so long. I realized that I think we have a we have a f desire to make our feelings of pride permanent or stable. And people always talk about real pride and real values, but what they mean by is that, is that they got something more stable from it. Like we often try to we attach pride to something and then we try to make that bigger and bigger and bigger or we internalize it and make it more permanent. Therefore, you achieve something, oh, that was an intelligent thing to do, well, then you did an intelligent thing and then it becomes you're an intelligent person. You try to make it like I am this thing and now you're like stuck in this weird prison where you have to live up to the expectation so you can feel proud about yourself Whoa. over and over and over again. So I think at some level there's a there's a deep rooted desire because in, in all the cultures there's a thing of like unconditional love. And I, I do think it's actually unconditional pride. That is that is a really good thought playground actually. It might be bullshit. And obviously the other side of unconditional pride is unconditional shamelessness. This is a theory informing. There's a lot of evidence that I've seen for it and I've experienced as well because it helped me get a lot better, a lot more at ease in my own skin. But yeah, that's... If, uh, if there's one thing I want to leave behind is for people to think about why are they proud of the things they're proud of. And whether they're truly proud of it or it's because it's cash is in social currency. Or I mean, you can train it, man. Like, we talked about this earlier, but like... People can train you to feel ashamed of almost anything. Context and environment matter. Yeah, and it's the same way you can unlearn it. And <sighs> it's, it's been fascinating to see how people will start lying to themselves of like, because they've attached something negative and something shameful to a feature, then they start denying the... So right now there's a whole the fat acceptance movement, right? And I'm like, yes, we should not shame fat people. We also shouldn't lie and say that this is always a healthy in every single moment. It's almost like you're trying to completely deny any negative aspect to the thing that you feel shamed about because that's the only way you can feel good about yourself. I'm like, no, oh, feel good about yourself. And then also deal with the other aspects of the thing. Yeah. And the incel community, have you heard of the incel community? Yes, yes. In the Black Pill movement, in these forums... Like, if you showcase any form of hope, you're lambasted from that tribe. Because by having hope, or by having pure shame in those communities, and by taking action, casts a level of... Doubt over their doubt own. Over their own existence. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um... And then, yeah, at some level, like, they start becoming proud of not having a girlfriend in a weird way. Yeah. I mean, I've done this, I'm kind of taking a wild step in the dark there, so I want to take a step back. But there's definitely something how it's ridiculous to start thinking, like, oh, I've got a chance, I can actually do something. Yeah. Like, they start actively making fun of each other for thinking that maybe life is not all fucked up. And when I started my podcast, I was, you may have heard this in my 100th episode, whereby... When I created the Instagram Instagram account of it, I was on a night out, and someone showed me a part of a group chat that they were in, whereby another lad screenshotted the Instagram and threw it into the chat, and called me a gimp, or called me whatever names for doing that thing. And what I now realise, and what I probably realised then, is that how, inst how insecure must they be for lambasting me for fulfilling my purpose and helping others? It said more about me than it did them. It made me the other way around. It said more about them than it did you. Yeah, or? yeah. Sorry, it said more about them than than me. Sorry. Um, and uh, only now I can really believe that it's because it showcased to them an insecurity that they had, which was maybe putting themselves out online, meeting new people. 
Oh Have yeah. You, your opinions. Oh yeah. If uh, we were talking about lessons, man, earlier, but learning that everybody lives in an inter their own interpretation of the world has been. When you go into the internet, because some of the comments we get are fucking vicious, and then if you're a woman on the internet, good luck. Do you know what I mean? Like it, it, it can get a lot more physical, and it can get. Or people are just braver to talk about. You know, you. If you know, for a guy, it's kind of like I don't know. There's certain things they don't say about us. Yeah. But uh, but yeah, that's that's been like a. Oh, I don't have to fucking care about your opinion, at all. <laughs> Good day, sir. Yeah, I think that is... I think the Val Ravikant who I quoted earlier has an amazing quote around this. It's, it's such a kind of cringy quote in the essence of it, but it's, it's, it rings so true. Most men have two lives. Yeah. The second begins when you learn that you only have one. Yeah, true, true, true. I agree with that. 